الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ثم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم أم لم ينبأ بما في في الصحف الأولى uh, didn't he wasn't he informed of what was given in previous scriptures uh, and Allah عز وجل actually in this has in this case says في صحف موسى وإبراهيم الذي وفى ألا تزر وازرة وزر أخرى وأن ليس لل ليس للإنسان إلا ما سعى وأن سعيه سوف يرى this talk, inshallah, is divided into several parts. And what I'm going to try to do is again, like I did last evening for those of you that were there, try to make you repeat after myself so I know that you're keeping up. Okay? What we're going to talk about, first of all, is the American dream. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of uh, happiness. Very good. Pursuit of happiness. So I'm going to start with the pursuit of happiness. And I'm going to tell you that even though that's an incredible notion, and the founding fathers of this nation had something really genuine in mind, I was really peculiar and really estranged actually to find that the Qur'an does not talk about the pursuit of happiness. It's pretty shocking. I'm trying to figure this thing out for 15 years now, trying to find where is the pursuit of happiness in the Qur'an. Allah doesn't talk about it. He doesn't. And it made me wonder, why is this such a fundamental crux of modern society? People just want to be happy and Allah is not talking about it. I forgive they you. Re, they want to uh, say that please don't come, like the session is full. Please. Okay, so guys outside, they're making me tell you the session is full, which is terrible. But at least there's a bazaar right behind you. <laughs> so, okay. So anyway, what was I saying? Something about Islam? <laughs> pursuit of happiness, that's right. Okay, so the Quran does not explicitly talk about the pursuit of happiness. And it's interesting that the Quran, the highest thing it talks about is contentment. Contentment, just being at peace. That's the ultimate goal in Islam. It's not happiness, it's just two different things. Being at peace and being happy are two different things. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, some studies in psychology that are really interesting. And they really shed light on how we are to understand one of the statements in the Quran that this entire talk is about. And the statement comes from Surah Al-Najm, وَأَلَّيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى A human being will have nothing for his own benefit except whatever efforts he made. Now I want you to stay with me as, uh, you know, as best you can. The first and the lowest pursuit any of you will have, and I'm particularly picking on the young people in the audience. I know there, there are young at heart in the audience too, but this is for the young physically, okay? So th those of you, you, know, you understand that the lowest, I need you to understand that the lowest of all pursuits in your life is going to be happiness. The lowest of all of them. And let me demonstrate why that is. You don't feel like getting up and doing your homework on Saturday morning so you sleep in until 12 and you are what? Happy. It doesn't take much to be happy. Some kid plays video games the entire night and he's got a huge migraine but since he beat the game he's some, somehow happy. <laughs> Somebody gets a call at work, listen it's a snow day, you don't have to come in. Guess what? They are what? They're happy. In other words, happiness is easy. In small things, happiness is easy. Of course, happiness in relationships is very difficult. Making your parents happy or getting your parents to be happy with you is very hard. Making your wife happy, let's leave that one alone. Let's leave that one alone. Okay. Uh, yeah. But anyway, for yourself, you know, attaining happiness, it could be as simple as you watched a movie and you felt happy. Or you went to meet some friends and you felt happy. Or you went to your favorite restaurant and you felt happy. It doesn't take much. But you know what? It comes and what happens to it? It goes. It goes away. You get bored again. You get, you get frustrated again. And you want to be happy again. Right? So you keep going after this drug of happiness which keeps leaving you. you never, it never stays with you. That's the lowest of all pursuits. So when people say, I just want to be happy. I don't understand what that means because nobody's always happy. Allah gave us a huge score of emotions to experience in life. And they're all part of a healthy life. Happiness is just one of them. So if your pursuit is just happiness, let me tell you, you're in for a lot of disappointment. That's never going to happen. You're never going to be constantly living in a state of happiness. That's not how it works. I'm not saying you're going to be depressed, but I am saying that life is about struggle too, isn't it? When you're studying for your finals, you're not happy. When you're in the middle of a three hour final, you're not happy. When you're with guys, you want to work out. You want to see, when you see the results, you'll be happy. But when you're working out and you're sweating and you're dying, you're not happy. Look at your face. You know, like, you do the Sylvester Stallone. It's really like... So anyway, 
The lowest of all pursuits is what? Happiness. Happiness. Let's go a step further. The second pursuit. It's a step further, which means it requires more effort. And every time I take a step, you have to go through more pain to get it. Okay, so the next step is the pursuit of cool. It's not the pursuit of happiness, it's the pursuit of cool. Cool just means nobody's going to pick on me. I'm going to blend in with everybody else. Nobody's going to point at me and say, why are you dressed like that? Why do you talk like that? Why do you look like that? Why are you walking like that? Why are you hanging out with those people? Why did you buy that? Why are you driving that car? People will point at you and criticize you and you just don't want that to happen. You want to fit in and not be the object of anybody's criticism. You just like to blend in and almost be invisible. You're cool like everybody else and that takes work. So for example, those of you that are in high school or even before that in middle school, how you dress to school is a really big deal. And actually before you pick a shirt out of the closet, and before you pick the shoes that you're going to wear, the thought goes through your mind of who's going to be making fun of you for wearing it. It actually runs through your mind. You know, when, you're, when you go shopping, when your parents say, okay, let's get you some clothes or whatever, when you go shopping or they give you money, the, the decision to buy whatever clothes you buy or the shoes you buy, actually a lot of it is driven by what people are going to think of you when you wear this. This is your pursuit of cool and it takes more work to blend in. It's easy to be the weirdo that everybody else finds strange. But it takes work to be like everybody else. And a lot of people, a lot of young people, unfortunately, have to give themselves up. They have to pretend they are someone they're not just to fit in. I've met kids that are maybe 14, 15 years old. I met this kid one time. He had a baseball hat on sideways. It used to be a thing, right? And he's got pants hanging down. And he's just kind of like, you know. And he came up to me and he started crying. And I, I sat him down. We started talking. And he tells me, you know, I, don't, I hate dressing like this. I hate it. But if I don't, kids make fun of me. I could even get beat up. I just, I, I have to dress like this. I have to, I, I don't like cursing, but I do a lot when I go to school. Because I have to fit in. There's the lowest pursuit, and that is that of happiness. One above that is the pursuit of what? Cool. Then there's a pursuit above that. It's the pursuit of popularity. I don't just want to blend in. I want to be the coolest person there is. I want to be the one everybody else wants to be friends with. I want to be the loudest one on the lunch table. I want to be the one that makes, before anybody gets to make fun of me, I want to be the one that makes fun of everybody else. And that's a lot of, a lot of times the kids that are popular in school, they're actually popular because they make fun of other kids. And everybody's scared that they'll be the next target so they kind of come under their wing. So they're not the next target. This, by the way, I'm not just talking, even though I'm focusing on young people, this happens with adults. This happens with adults, absolutely. This happens with our uncles and aunties, absolutely. The pursuit of popularity means I just want to be talked about. I want to be the center of attention. I need people to be commenting on me. So I'm going to post a picture, I'm going to tweet something, I'm going to post, you know, make a video, whatever I'm going to do, so that people are talking about me. And every time that, co that, that, you know, that commentary starts going down, I need to do something new so the conversation starts anew again. And the pursuit of popularity is a strange thing because it makes people humiliate themselves. Like for example, in the music industry or the entertainment industry, when an artist, you know, their, their album went platinum or whatever and everybody's downloading their song and it's no longer popular, then they have to humiliate themselves and make, you know, disgusting videos or get involved in a controversy or, you know, so that they're, the tabloids about them, at least those are popular because they couldn't get popular because of their, their own talent anymore. They couldn't sell the next music, you know, the, the next bit of music video or next song or whatever as they could the last one. So this is the pursuit of popularity and in order to become popular, it takes work. You got to spend money, you got to spend time, you got to work on yourself, work on your image, and it becomes really important to you to maintain your image and to maintain that, that, you know, that status among people, that profile among people. This is the next pursuit. But above that is another pursuit, and that is the pursuit of prestige. For college students, this is more important than elementary and high school, but for college students, this becomes a, a big deal. The pursuit of what did I say? Prestige. I'm going to go in order. At the bottom, there's happiness. Then what's there? Cool, then popularity, and now we're in prestige. Prestige means you want to be able to associate yourself <clears throat> with something that is very valuable. You want to be able to tell people, you know, I went to Harvard. You don't tell them you went there for a weekend <laughs> to pick up your friend. <laughs> But you would like to use your name in the same sentence as Harvard. 
As a matter of fact, even if you're a freshman at Harvard, what have you accomplished? Nothing. You're at that school. What have you done in the world? Nothing. But you would like to have your name associated with a prestigious institution. You would like to have your name associated with a prestigious brand. So you'd like to wear clothes of a certain brand. And if the brand label is not mentioned, you want to have a conversation with people, forcing them to ask, where did you get that? And then you say, well, it's Armani or something. Because you want yourself to be associated with that brand. That is when a car comes in. What kind of car are you driving? What kind of clothes are you wearing? What kind of people are you associated with? You don't want to take a selfie with someone because you would like to remember them. You want to take a selfie so you can post it so other people can feel like you're more important because you're standing next to this person. It becomes a matter of prestige. If it's just for you, it's great. But this is actually more about letting other people know how awesome you are by association, not by accomplishment, <laughs> you know? And by the way, in, our, in the religious community, in the Muslim community, another kind of prestige sometimes our parents have, go through is they want to make their kids a hafid uh, and a doctor, those two things. <laughs> a hafid doctor, forget it, they're already in Jannah. <laughs> There's deen and dunya, bam, like, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasala wa fil akhirati hasala. Done deal, <laughs> you know? But they love telling people, this is, you know, my son, he's a, he's a hafiz. <laughs> you know? And they turned them into a trophy. Unfortunately, that's not why you memorize Quran, but it's, it's happened. It's happened. Now, we are at the level of what? Prestige. So it becomes, it's going to be a really big deal to you, for example, when you get your first job. Maybe you get your job at, I don't know, Microsoft or something. Who cares? But whatever. If you get a job at a big company, right? You get a job at Google. They give you your, your badge. You wear the badge into the masjid. <laughs> you know? Just because, you know, what, what are you, are you, are you use a lot of Google, they give you a special badge. No, 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 they, I got a job there. <laughs> you know? So you want to let people know what you've accomplished. Tafakhurum baynakum, Quran calls it. A, a, a desire to show to others what, you, what prestige you have. Anyway, I'm going to start at the, top, at, the, at the bottom again. What was the first thing? Good, happiness. Second thing, guys wake up. Second thing, cool. Third, popularity. Fourth, prestige. Above that, there's the pursuit of money. There are some people who don't care about happiness. They don't care about cool. They don't care about popularity. They don't care about prestige. All they care about is what? Money. And they know how to make a lot of money. These are people that are wearing a dirty t-shirt and old ripped up jeans. They're driving an 88 Mazda Miata and they don't care because they're making a million dollars a month. They're making 10 million a month. I met these people. I met people that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars a year and you would not know that homeboy is that kind of money because his hair is all over the place and he's just, you know, he's doing a thing. It's a look he's going for or not going for it, because he just doesn't care. He just knows how to do business, and he's amazing at business. And that's all he ever thinks about. All he ever thinks about is, how am I going to increase sales? How am I going to expand? How am I going to open up the next warehouse? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? SubhanAllah. These people are incredible human beings. And by the way, as we move up this ladder, does it take more work? It does, doesn't it? It takes no work to be happy. It takes some work to, be, to fit in. It takes some more work to become popular. It takes even more work to have prestige or association with prestige. And it takes a lot of work to make a lot of what? To make a lot of money. It's a, it's a, it requires an incredible amount of work ethic. These people don't take a break. Then there's above that. There's even higher levels. And by the way, when I say it takes more effort, I need you to understand something. Every time I describe a higher level, you have to go through more pain to get there. You have, to, you have to tolerate pain, grit, in order to get there. So we're going to go above money now. And above money, there's somebody who just wants to be number one. They want to have excellence. They want to have excellence. I don't want to be the programmer in my company. I want to be the top programmer in my company. I don't want to be a student in class. I want to be the number one student in class. I don't want to get an SAT high score on the SAT. I want to get a perfect score on the SAT. I don't just want to be a basketball player. I want to be in the NBA, NBA and I want to be the MVP. 
And they're never happy with themselves until they keep pushing themselves harder and harder and harder and harder and harder. They're never satisfied. These are the kind of people that pursue excellence in whatever they do, whether it's studies or it's exercise or it's athletics or it's you know it, uh, their work field, their research, whatever it is, they need to be on top. They need to be number one. And you know who they're never satisfied, they, who they compare themselves to? This is important. You know who they compare themselves to? Themselves from yesterday. They don't care about anybody else. They don't look at anybody else. They know that they could have done better. So they're never, never satisfied. They never sit back. They're always saying, man, I, I need to do more. I could have done better. I know. And everybody else might say, wow, you're amazing. That's an amazing thing you did. And they're like, who cares? I know I could do better. So they don't even care about the praise and the, you know, the accolades from people who think that they've done a, a incredible things. They just keep pushing themselves harder and harder and harder. An easy example for you guys to think about is Michael Phelps, right? How many people praising this guy for breeding all the records there are? But do you think he's sitting there saying, oh, I breed the records. Now I have the prestige so I can sit back. He wasn't after prestige. Clearly he's after what? Excellent. So he's never going to be satisfied. He's going to keep pushing himself. Like a machine, keep going forward and forward and forward, accelerate even more. These are, the pe these are, by the way, very few people in the world. Very few people. So a lot of you guys sitting here, once you get like a passing grade in school, now it's, now it's time for the pursuit of happiness. Put on the PlayStation, like, you know. Then there's the guy who gets a 99 and he's beating himself up. How did I make that one mistake? And it's usually not a guy, it's usually a girl. <laughs> I tell you, I, on this point about excellence, I will make a, a comment about what I do for a living. One of my, one of my part, one of part of my career, I don't really have a real job, but a, a part of my career is I teach you know, young men and women Arabic in an intensive program. It takes about nine months to t teach them some things about Arabic. And this half of the class is girls, and this half of the class is guys, 30 girls and 30 guys. And the sisters, consistently for the last five years have completely destroyed the brothers in exam scores. Com I mean completely. But the guys consistently have been happier. <laughs> Let me tell you something, the girls are always upset. Ustad, I know I got a hundred, but I'm not sure I understand fully. <laughs> and this guy got a 25 and he goes, I get it Ustad, I get it, I get it, I get it. I am dealing with two different species inside a classroom. <laughs> they have a completely different mindset. <laughs> so I have to tell these guys to wake up. Stupid, you don't understand. Do some work. And I have to tell these ladies, calm down, you get it. Take it easy on yourself. I can never tell these guys to take it easy on themselves because they couldn't possibly be taking it any easier. <laughs> it, couldn't, it couldn't possibly happen. <laughs> So we, we're up to what now? What are we up to? Okay, help me out. Let's start at the bottom again. Happiness. Cool. Popularity. Prestige. Okay. Money. Excellence. What could be above excellence? I don't know. There is something above excellence, and that is impact. Impact. I don't care what I get. I don't care if I make more money than everybody else. I don't care if I'm number one. That's not what I care about. I want to do something for others. I want to make, I want to leave a legacy. I know that I have a limited time on this planet. And when I go, I want to leave my mark on this earth. I want to be able to say that I did something that made this a better place for other people. I want to be a person of impact on others, on other things and others, on the environment around me. You know, there are people, we're talking about non-Muslims right now. We're not talking about believers yet. There are people who get an MBA, top schools. They could be making six-figure salaries coming right out of school. And they're dropping those salaries and they're going to companies that are doing socially responsible work. And they're taking a major pay cut because they, instead of believing in money, they believe far more in impact. So they'd rather work with an organization that's helping you know, reform the education system. Or somebody, with, a doctor who could be making a huge amount of money. So he just finished residency, he just finished everything, and he's now ready to get into the workforce, decides he's going to spend three years in Doctors Without Borders. You ever heard of this? You don't make money when you go to Doctors Without Borders. 
You, you risk your life to go to doctors without borders. But why is this young man going? Why is this young woman going? Because instead of worrying about what kind of car am I going to get when, I, when the money starts rolling in, he's more, the, he or she is more worried about the impact they want to have on the world. They want to help. They want to do something good. And my, by, I tell you, that kind of selflessness is very, very few people. The, more, the higher up we go this ladder, the fewer people you find. And those people are incredible human beings. They are, they, these are actually the human beings that have made changes on the planet. Think about people like Nelson Mandela or something. People that have spent time in jail because they believe in something. Because they believe in impact. They want to do something more than themselves. They sacrifice themselves for the greater good. They don't even think about themselves. They are servants of a cause. And so these people, these people are the people of impact. They're way even above the people of excellence. By the way, excellence is automatic for these people. Excellence is not their goal, it's a byproduct. You know why? Because if you want to have that kind of impact, you have to have what in yourself? Actually, you have to push yourself harder and harder. And you might wonder, maybe this is the highest goal somebody can reach is impact. But no, there's something higher. There's the ultimate truth. Somebody pursues justice. Somebody pursues the truth. Somebody pursues an ideal. They believe in justice. And justice is something that you can never fully see in the world, can you? It's never going to fully be there. But they don't care. They're going to work towards it anyway. Now this, and by the way, when you work towards something you can't even see, it's the hardest thing to do in the world. If you're working towards impact, even if you see a little bit of impact, you get encouraged, isn't it? You get encouraged and it pushes you further. But when you work towards an idea, the cause of justice, the cause of justice, you may not, you may not see justice ever, ever. How are these people able to push themselves even if they're working towards something they've never even seen? These are the most incredible, resilient kinds of people. Once they believe in an idea and everybody else thinks they're crazy, they don't care, they keep going. And so I'm going to start at the top now, which is the pursuit of truth and the pursuit of justice, and tell you that the legacy of our prophets, all of them, alayhim salatu wasalam, was actually the pursuit of truth. They cared about sharing the truth with people. And a lot of times on the Day of Judgment, we learn from the Prophet ﷺ, there's actually going to be people that show up before Allah on Judgment Day, messengers showing up before Allah on Judgment Day with no followers behind them. No followers. Not one, not two, zero. Zero. What did they pursue? The truth. How much impact did they have? Zero but they're still absolutely successful in the sight of Allah, yes or no? So now we need to understand something. We're going to go back to this chart again, but I'm going to focus on the last four. The last four, maybe even the last five. Let's see. Let's first talk about excellence. When you pursue excellence, you're never satisfied with who? Yourself. The question is, why aren't you satisfied with yourself? Just because you want to be better? No, if, you're, if you understand the Islam's point of view, you're never satisfied with yourself because every single one of you people is supposed to be in pursuit of impact. You're supposed to be thinking of other than yourself. And that's why you should never be satisfied with yourself. Allah has put more responsibility on you than you realize. I want you to think about this too. This is actually one of the most powerful statements in the Quran and because it's not clearly translated, it creates a lot of problems. Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها. Allah does not put a burden on any individual except, now the, here's, the, here's the weak translation, except to their capacity. Allah will not put a burden on you that you cannot bear. Have you heard this before? Okay, the Arabic would have been لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا بوسعها If it was to their capacity, a ba would have been there But actually إلا وسعها يعني كلف الله وسعنا The meaning is completely different now it's that, That's the bare meaning But you know what the true meaning of this ayah is? Allah has not burdened you with anything except your own potential Think about what I'm saying Allah has not burdened you with anything except what? Your own potential. In other words, did you have the potential to be better? Yes. Could you have done more? Yes. And Allah will hold you accountable for what you could have done. Not the bare minimum, but the maximum. Allah wants you to push yourself and push yourself and push yourself and show Him what you're made of. Show Him what you're made of. That's the idea of the, of the pursuit here. We're not interested in the pursuit of happiness. That is actually something Allah gives us as a side benefit. 
We're not interested in the pursuit of cool because cool is lame. Everybody else is a loser and you want to be a loser like them. We're not interested in the pursuit of popular. You know why? Because everybody else who has no idea of the purpose in their life, if you're popular in their eyes, you're just the dumbest of them. We're not interested in the pursuit of prestige because we know prestige comes from Allah. Prophets were made homeless. They had prestige. People were, sp these messengers were spit on and they had prestige. We've got the wrong definition of prestige. We're associating it with the wrong things. Are you giving me a water bottle? Thank you. Okay, now, when it comes to the pursuit of excellence, you guys, Muslims, we cannot afford, we cannot afford to be, sacrifi to, to be satisfied with mediocrity. We cannot afford it. You cannot be, you as a believer, as a Muslim, have to push yourself to better. Whatever you're doing. If you're memorizing, you could be memorizing better. If you're studying, you could be studying better. If you're working, you could have been working better. If you're volunteering, you could be volunteering better. Push yourself to better. Push yourself, especially when you're young. Right now you have time. You don't have that much responsibility. But I have homework. Yes, that's not too much responsibility. Responsibility will come once you get married. Once you have children. Right now you're free. Right now you have the freedom you will never ever have in your life. This is the time to push yourself, not sit back and play video games. This is not the time to watch, sit there and watch movie after movie after movie. This is not the time to be excited about the new Avengers or whatever. This is not the time, not for you. You have much bigger things to do. The entire world is waiting on the impact that you will have. You can't sit around. Everybody else can, that's fine. They don't have higher pursuits. You have to be the person of excellence because you're from now thinking about impact. Every single young man and woman in this audience should be thinking about what did Allah give me? What talent did he give me? And what impact will I have on this planet because of it? What am I going to do with it? And as you think about that impact, then you realize what you're really working towards. You're working towards contentment, meeting with Allah. That is our ultimate truth. You want to be able to show Allah that you did everything in your potential. That's what you want to be able to do. You guys should have the best sleeping habits. You guys should have the best dietary habits. You, you guys should have the best exercise schedule. You guys should be the best in your prayers. You guys should be the best in your studies. You should be pushing yourself to excellence in everything you do in life. Everything you do in life should be at the top. You should not be eating junk food. You should not be the people that are just lounging around wasting time. Yes, you should have a good time. But even when you play, you play hard. You play hard. People see you, other kids in school see you, other people in college see you and say, I want to be like him. Everything he does is awesome. Everything he does, he does the best. That's what you people need to be. That's what this ummah needs. People of excellence. And then these people are going to have impact. And you know what? Our parents, unfortunately, because they were never taught this business, they were never taught this ladder. So you know what? Their highest ladder was prestige, maybe above prestige, money. That's where it ended. So the only concern they have for you is prestige and money. Get a job so you can have prestige. So we can say our, our son has a job. He's a doctor. He's a this. He's a that. And hopefully we can have a lot of money and we can show it off. That's it. That's where it ended for them. And that's what they talk to you about all the time. Where are you going to work? How are you going to make money? When are we going to buy a house? Isn't it? Everything ends at prestige and money. But there's so much more in life. What's above money? What was above money? Excellence. Who's going to push you to excellence? Who's going to think about impact? If you, if you and I only think about money and prestige, and it dies there, how many young men and women have gone and become doctors in the Muslim community? And I love picking on doctors because they're so depressed in the Muslim community. They went and became doctors because their mama told them and daddy told them. I would not want to go to you if I have a problem. I would not. I would rather go to someone who became a physician because they love helping humanity. They care. They don't love the next payment coming in from the corrupt insurance company. They actually care about humanity. Those are the physicians I'd like to have a relationship with or go to and take my children to, you know? People of impact. And now my final bit in this. Allah says, وَأَن لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى Human beings will have nothing for themselves except the effort that they made, the pursuit that they had. Now let's start again. The pursuit of happiness, the pursuit of cool, the pursuit of popularity, the pursuit of prestige, the pursuit of money, the pursuit of 
Excellence, the pursuit of impact and the pursuit of truth, yes? You know the most valuable thing to Allah? The most valuable thing to Allah of all of these is pursuit. Not money, not impact, not excellence, all of those things will come. What Allah wants to see from you is what? Pursuit. I told you there are prophets that show in front of Allah on Judgment Day how many followers? Zero. So they had zero impact. But Allah still gives them the highest ranks in Jannah. Why? Because Allah respects their pursuit, their effort, their grit. They were tough and they went through it. If you were to have a progress report for Nuh alayhi salam every year, let's see a growth chart in how many people became Muslim. Nuh alayhi salam, this year, you know, it's annual review. How many people become Muslim every year? <laughs> 950 years. There's like, bloop. The chart isn't going like this. It's just it's this flat and maybe even goes down. Some people are coming close and <laughs> they went away. There's no impact. There, there is no you know, progress on the ground. But you know what we respect about Nuh alayhi salam is his constant, constant, constant pursuit. We have to internalize this. You guys have to be a people of pursuit. We will have nothing in front of Allah if not our pursuits. Young people, listen to me. What I'm, listen to what I'm saying, please, carefully. Please think about this. What is your life going to mean? If your life is just one video game to the next, if your life is just one episode to the next of a show, what are you pursuing? Who cares if you got trophies on that video game or you got 100% synchronization in Assassin's Creed? Who cares? Who cares? What is that in account? How did, what did that change the, for the world? You know, who cares how many push-ups you can do? Who cares? You have to think more than that. You have to think higher than that. And when you start doing that, I will tell you one thing Allah will give you. Allah will give you happiness. When you really have pursuit, then your life means something. And when your life means something, it makes you happy. When you don't have pursuit, then you'd never find meaning in your life. And that's why you're never happy. Doesn't matter how, many, how much music you listen to, or how much hanging out you do, or how much partying you do, you're just never happy. You're never satisfied. You're always bored. You're always just, you know, not happy with yourself, etc. It is this pursuit that you have to internalize. You young people have to be people of incredible, incredible, incredible pursuit. Allah says, وَأَنَّ سَعْيَهُ سَوْفَ يُرَى I love this ayah. And I'm ending with this ayah. And that his effort, his effort, his pursuit will soon be seen. His effort will soon be what? Seen. Let me tell you something. When you show somebody your resume, I graduated from this school. I've worked here and here and here. I did this and this and this project. What do you put on your resume? The results or the pursuit? You don't put the pursuit, you put the results. The result was you graduated. You don't put, I worked really hard for the final semester and I was like dying to do this exam. And you don't put that on your resume. You just put, I graduated, yes or no? I did this project, this project, and this project. You don't put on your resume how much effort you made to finish that project, isn't it? And by the way, sometimes you put a lot of effort in and you don't, pay, you don't pass. Does that happen? You put an incredible amount of effort into a project and it fails. Or you don't get the grade that you deserved or you, you wanted. You just didn't see the results. Human beings, we judge each other based on what? Results. I don't care how much effort you made, you didn't get the results. You're fired. I don't care how much effort you made, you didn't pass the test, you're not graduating. You understand? But Allah on Judgment Day is not looking at your report card based on results. Allah is looking at your report card based on what? Effort. Allah says, and his effort, his pursuit is that which will be shown in, or which will be seen. That is remarkable because no other human being on the face of this earth can see my effort. I cannot see your effort and you cannot see mine. Only Allah sees effort. All we see are imp is impact. All we see are results. We are people of results. Allah is a judge of, of effort. Subhanallah. What an incredible master. Nobody will appreciate your efforts except Allah. So never underestimate your efforts because other people underestimate them. People didn't appreciate the kind of work you put in and you figure, well, I guess it wasn't worth it. It was to Allah. It was to Allah. It was worth it to Allah. So I, that part of my talk was specifically for the sisters. Because they, they do a lot of effort and they feel like it's not going somewhere anywhere. Not the guys, because guys don't do any effort. 
and they feel like, I did a lot, I tried so hard. I had. You guys just have to stop lying to yourself. You stop have to telling yourself you're doing enough. You have to stop being lazy. Shaitan is destroying you guys. It's, he's destroying you. You're so lazy. Stop being lazy. Stop rationalizing to yourself. Get up and do work. Do more. If you can't find a job, keep going. Keep applying. Keep applying. Keep talking. Keep networking. Don't stop and say, I tried everything. It didn't happen. No, you didn't try everything. Keep pushing. This is what you have to learn to do. Learn from your sisters, man. They're just, you know, I'm just, hold on, I'm coming after you, hold on. You're not going to be happy after a little while. You know your problem? <laughs> Forget the pursuit of happiness. Your problem is that you're actually always uncertain about yourself. You're always thinking I'm not good enough or it didn't count. Stop it! And you have to take it easier on yourself. Not talking to you. You don't need to take it easier on yourself. You, you take easy enough on yourself already. MashaAllah. You on the other hand, need to chill out. You need to calm down. I've met sisters that are studying Islam, that are studying the Quran, but I don't have all the vocabulary yet. Yes, auntie, relax. You don't have all the vocabulary. It's not the end of the world. Allah is not interested in your results. He is interested in what? Your effort, your effort, your effort. Stop worrying about your results. You worry too much about your results. You worry too much about what you don't already know, what you haven't already accomplished. Stop thinking about accomplishment and start thinking about you know, sincere, genuine, best possible effort. And then let me tell you, the results from Allah will come and they will come pouring. But they will come on His schedule, not yours. Two people will make exactly the same amount of effort and somebody will see the fruit of their labor right away and somebody else will wait for years before they see anything. And that is in the hands of Allah. Because, and you don't get to say, well, he got so much results. I didn't get any results. We made the same amount of effort. This isn't fair. No, no, no. It is entirely fair because that calendar belongs to Allah. And all Allah wanted to see from you was your effort. There are going to be two people that take the same exact test. This happens in my class. They take the same exact test. They, one, of the, one guy works extra hard. Man, this guy studies all night and all day. He was my friend before he came to the program. We were friends together and now I'm his teacher. And I'm telling him, hey man, you want to go hang out? No, I got to study. I'm your teacher. No, I got to study. There's an exam. I'll go easy on you. I'll give you extra credit. Just go, let's go play, man. Just go play some math. No, I have to study. This guy studied day and night, day and night, day and night. I know the effort he made. People don't know. I know the effort he made. But you know what? He's so smart in his career. He's so smart in business. He's so smart professionally. But Allah did not create him to learn Arabic or something. No matter how much he learned, he could not get a high score. He could not even, barely passed. Barely passed. Every time. And the kid next to him, super genius, laziest bum I've ever met, kid is sleeping in class all day and he gets a 99 every time or a 100. And it used to make me so mad. I want to see that kid get a zero. I do. Like I want to see him get a zero so I can slap him so hard with this paper. And the guy who's killing himself studying is failing the test. And I as a teacher am frustrated. Imagine the students. I as a teacher am frustrated. How come this kid puts no effort in and he gets the results and this guy puts every possible effort in and gets zero results? It seems unfair. But you know what? When both of these people come in front of Allah and both say, I was learning Arabic for Allah. I was learning Arabic to please you, Ya Rab. Allah will say, okay, let's see what you did. And one of them shows the 99 and the other one shows the 20. What is more valuable to Allah on that day? Oh, that 20 is priceless. It is priceless. Because Allah is not scoring the number on the page. What is He scoring? The effort. And that 99 may be worth very, very, very little because he didn't have to make much effort to get it. He didn't have to make much effort. This is how Allah will judge. It's all about the quality, not about the quantity. People can only judge quantity. Allah will judge quality. Think about the quality of work you're doing, the quality of life you're living, the quality of the day you had. What time did you wake up for Fajr this morning? What kind of breakfast did you eat? Who did you talk to? How did you spend your time? What did you do? What was the quality of your day? Fix that and inshallah ta'ala this ummah has a bright future. Because once you start thinking about the ultimate truth and you start thinking about impact, there are going to be ideas that come out of this room 
There are going, there's going to be creativity that comes out of this room. There are going to be projects that come out of this room that are going to change the world over. They will impact the world like it's never been impacted before. That is what the Muslim youth is capable of. That is what the young believer is capable of when they have the right pursuit. May Allah Azza wa make these people, these young people, the heroes of this ummah, the people of pursuit, that next generations come back and say, man, we want to beat them. They're the gold standard. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.